Welcome to Strip Coverlet, where we squeeze the bigger picture out of literature. I'm Adrian Ford, and we're here for another video in the short story discussion playlist here on the channel. Today's short story is A Worn Path by Eudora Welty. And I have to be honest, this is my first experience with Eudora Welty. So, A Worn Path, A Worn Path, what happened? Uh, Phoenix Jackson was on an arduous December journey into town. On this journey, she gets stuck in the bushes. She falls and is laying in a ditch in the cold until someone happens along to help her out. She's an older woman as well. So when she does fall, this could have been a very, very unfortunate experience. Um... She gets lost by her senses, but knows where she is sort of by muscle memory. Um, and this is an arduous, arduous journey for her. Up hills, down hills, in the snow, both ways, right? But um, we understand by the fact that she's there by muscle memory. That she's done this many times before. She's made this journey. Um, she ends up at some sort of medical facility. I, I was not able to tell if this was, simply by reading, if this was a hospital or if this was an old-style pharmacy. Um, <clears throat> I, I wasn't sure, so maybe I didn't read closely enough, but it was either, or, or some type of clinic, maybe. Um, and she is there to pick up medicine for her grandson, the two of them being, and this is a quote, the only two left in the world. After that, she aims to buy a pinwheel for the boy uh, for Christmas, and she says that he will not believe it. Um, so just reactionary, a reaction to this short story. It reminds me, so... It reminds me a little bit of um, sort of John Steinbeck in that a lot of what Steinbeck, from my experience with Steinbeck, a lot of what happens in his stories is that there is something which is just sweet enough to be tempting um, the chrysanthemums in the chrysanthemums, right? the money in the pearl, something that is just sweet enough to be tempting, that it brings out the best in the good people and the worst in the wretched. There is an old quote. I don't know who it's from, but I'm sure if you Google it, you'll be able to find who said it. Uh, in regular circumstances... The very best among us will do the very best that they can. The very worst among us will do the very worst that they can. But if you want a good person to do bad things, well, you'll need religion. And I think that that quote is, so that quote's very pro-atheist, right? But the principle in general just means you need a motivating factor. Um, and so often in life, I think that the motivating factor towards something that will bend a person just against their will is something something sweet enough to take them out of the mundanity of life. So here we have that pinwheel. The, the medicine for sure. But the medicine the medicine the medicine is necessary. For the grandson. The grandson has at some point eaten lye um, and his throat swells shut. I don't even know where to start with that part of the short story, but um, we have that little thing, the pinwheel, which Phoenix Jackson, by God, she's going to get it. And Nothing's going to stop her. And this is, I think, from a reactionary point of view from the, for this story, 
uh, that it feels kind of like Steinbeck to what is um, a discussion point, I think, for this short story. That's the human spirit. This short story is the human spirit. Look, there's five miles of shit, and you've got to slog through it for something that's just sort of bittersweet. But that bittersweet is for someone that you... Um, you hold in the highest regard. Are you going to do it? Right? That's that's the question. Of, that, that's the question. Of, that's not the meaning of life. Maybe it is. But it's certainly one of the questions of life. To what extent will we go to um, make the lives of, of those around us better? And the additional part of that question you know, it's sort of like um, character is what you do when no one's watching, right? Sort of like that. Sort of like um, the best way to tell someone's character is how do they treat someone that has no way to help them? How do they treat someone from whom they want nothing? And here we have Phoenix Jackson who is going through all of this hell to... Simply to get the medicine, sure, but to get a pinwheel for the young boy. Um, but I want to ask an important question. If we're going to move from reaction, sort of, to discussion piece, sort of, to um, the literary symbolism, things like that in this in this short story, I want to ask an important question. So. The part where she falls in the ditch and she's sort of on her back like a June bug, she says, until the hunter comes along with his dog. Very briefly is mentioned the quail, but the quail was mentioned, I think, twice in here. Once alive, once dead with the hunter. The quail is a bob white quail. Quails are often used to symbolize danger. And why wouldn't they be? After all, from what do you know a quail? A quail is hunting and sport, right? That Nobody knows a quail otherwise. Quails were invented to be hunted. Um, so whenever someone is writing about a quail, so sort of the the cultural phenomenon of quail. Not Dan Quail, but quail in general. The cultural phenomenon of quail is the hunt. The hunt being um, successful if the quail is killed, but the hunt being sort of the sport of knowing whether or not danger is lurking. The quail has to know danger is lurking. Um, there's also the question of, I'm not going to remember this story specifically, so there's a reason I remember the quote about atheists. I'm an atheist. I don't remember the quote about, uh, or, or what happened in the Bible, but God got mad at the Israelites for eating too many quail. So quail can be a sign or symbol for gluttony. Those two things being true, coinciding with one, another, with one another, that they do symbolize danger, the presence of danger, but also possibly gluttony. How does that overlap? Um, I think it overlaps pretty well in this short story, and I'm going to tell you why. Another thing that Phoenix comes across in her journey is a stray black dog. Now, you don't need me to tell you, random guy on the internet, random guy on YouTube to tell you that stray black dog means evil. Stray black dog means danger. Uh, that is pretty, I wouldn't say self-explanatory, but it's something that's fairly obvious. It's something that is often uh, popping up in literature. Uh, you also have, earlier in this short story, 
Phoenix Jackson asks a bird a question. What bird was that? It was a buzzard. She asks it, who are you looking at? A buzzard looking at you is a very bad sign. Um, buzzards obviously symbolizing death. There's even a part in this short story where a scarecrow has convinced her that she has met death himself. During that little part of the short story, it is commented on a few times, I believe, uh, how bad Phoenix's eyesight is. And in fact, Phoenix's eyesight is um, mentioned several times over during this short story and how bad it is. And I don't know if you have bad I I've got bad eyesight. In fact, I went probably the same length of time in which many people would have four pairs of glasses. I had one. I didn't get my eyes looked at for a long time. I've got to tell you, uh, during, during this time, I was taking walks quite, quite often during the nighttime hours. Um, I work overnights, I would get off work, I would go for a walk. Bad eyes, old glasses. It's a bad combination, you can't see a whole lot. I got new glasses, didn't know how blind I was until I got the new glasses. Um, one of the things that hit me once I got new glasses was how much the moon looks like it's claymation. That's how long I went with old glasses. I forgot what the moon looked like. Um, still, during that time, I had glasses. Phoenix is not cited here as having glasses. Phoenix is making a much more arduous walk than was I, simply around uh, the block or around the park. I have to ask, does Phoenix Jackson make it home? Much to do was made when she got to the clinic as to whether or not the boy was alive. Did the boy die? No. The boy was still alive. And it's just the two of them left in the world. Her and the grandson who has health problems. But Phoenix Jackson has health problems. Mentioned many times in this short story, but never dwelled upon. Never dwelled upon like the um, medical anomaly for the boy. I have to ask, does Phoenix Jackson make it home? We got all of these signs early in the short story. The buzzard, thinking she met death, the black dog, all of these things. And really, they were sort of tempting us, I think, into wondering if Phoenix Jackson was going to die in the short story. But not all of literature happens on the page. Phoenix Jackson, many times in this short story, is um, presented with these symbols of death. Then we learn that the boy had health problems, and we are tempted here by the question from the nurse or the clerk or whoever that individual was, wherever they worked. We are tempted with the question, did the boy die? So we are tempted twice here, lulled asleep by the short story, tempted twice here in this short story to think we've made it. We are tempted to think Phoenix Jackson is going to die, going to whatever destination she's going. Then we learn she got there. But the question is posed, is the boy dead? Then we have that lull. Then we realize, no, the boy's not dead. And then the, end, then the short story ends. 
But does that mean Phoenix Jackson is okay? Now, the last thing that I will present here, we are tempted in all of those ways, lulled to sleep, after the conclusion of the act. Phoenix Jackson gets to the medical facility. We are tempted all the while believe, to believe that getting to the medical facility was the dangerous part. She might die along the way. Then, at the medical facility, we learn that the health problem in question isn't hers. Maybe it's for the boy. Is the boy dead? No, he's not. He's fine. As fine as he's going to be. We're lulled to sleep again there. But this woman, her name is Phoenix. Well, Phoenix means rebirth, right? That's the important thing about a phoenix, is that they're reborn. They uh, burst into flames, and then they're reborn as a young phoenix. But if that name implies rebirth, rebirth implies death. Phoenix should invoke as many thoughts of death as it does rebirth, or technically, one thought less about rebirth, about death as it does rebirth. Does Phoenix Jackson make it home to her grandson with those medications? I think not. I think not. I think that this is one of those short stories that is um, confoundingly sweet. Confoundingly sweet. Because we think, all the while, the old lady made it. After the, after the story, we think. Old lady made it. How cute. How quaint. But would that be why such a short story is so widely anthologized? as is A Worn Path by Eudora Welty? No, probably not. Most literature um, compilations that you find, there's nothing really sweet therein. Nothing particularly sweet therein. I suggest to you that no, Phoenix Jackson died in the second ditch, or wherever it was that Phoenix Jackson found herself. Now, if you like this sort of thing, it really does help me out on the channel here if you do hit that like button. Uh, if you enjoy these types of videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button to stay around. And if you want to be notified when I drop videos like this, hitting that bell icon will keep you in the loop. And I hope to have you back for the next short story discussion.